Welcome back to PNC's News Now, and welcome, Joanna O. Oh. Hello. So today was pretty hot, right? Yeah. Was well, yeah. it just me? Yeah. Hotter than no, usual. it was a hot day today, uh, yeah. yeah. Was it 98 degrees hot? No. Oh, no, that was yesterday. That was yesterday. <laughs> According to the records, we see that Guam was hottest around the noon with temperature hitting 86 degrees, but Saipan's hottest time was around 1. Interesting because we're so close, but it's not the same. Just like how today's weather sounds similar to yesterday's weather, but they're not the same. You probably noticed pretty dry weather throughout this week. If you liked this week's weather, then good news to you. We can pretty much expect similar weather for the rest of the week. But keep in mind that it could occasionally rain during the weekends because weather's Weather makers are coming like trade wind disturbance and shear line that is running towards us from the northeast. Due to the weather makers approaching, winds will blow harder. Take a look as well. Expect northeast winds of up to 15 miles per hour tonight, but on Friday and Saturday, it will blow up to 20 miles per hour. Skies will be partly cloudy with isolated showers, while temperatures vary from 77 to 88 over the three day forecast. Mm. This goes same for Saipan as well as Guam, as well as Marianas. <laughs> right, yeah, they were getting into the dry season pretty soon. Yeah. Mm, it might rain again though oh. over oh, the okay. weekend. So not yet. Not yet. Not we are, but not yet. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks, Joanna. Thank you. So the governor will meet with federal government officials next month to discuss his concerns for Guam's military affairs. He talked with the Guam Chamber of Commerce yesterday about the high compact impact costs and gave an update on the military buildup. PNC's Rizal Romanis has more in this report. Governor Eddie Cavo says compact impact costs for Guam are at $144 million, and Guam is still only getting a share of a total $30 million that is shared with Hawaii, American Samoa, and the CNMI. He also points out that out of the about $130 million paid out on tax refunds last year, $50 million was earned income tax credit paid out for low-income workers. Of that earned income tax credit of $50 million, there's estimates roughly about 50 percent of it uh, is also paid out uh, for immigrants coming into Guam. And of course, I, have, I believe Guam, diversity, everything, I don't mind the immigrants coming in, but I also believe the United States government has an obligation uh, to make good on its promises that it made on treaties and laws that created the compact. Governor Calvo is headed to Washington next month to make a case for an increase in reimbursement. He says during his visit, he hopes to talk with U.S. Armed Services Committee Chairman Senator John McCain about the island's concerns with the military buildup. I'm for the alignment, uh, realignment of forces in the Pacific, uh, but I'm also focused on what we agreed on in the programmatic agreement, and that's a one Guam approach. Governor Cabo says about $330 million is what his administration feels is necessary for mitigation, which includes improving the island's infrastructure, roads, and public health facilities. He says he believes Senator McCain has softened up and will probably move forward in accepting that analysis. Rosal Romanes, PNC News. The CCU has approved a plan to build new power plants along the Harmon Cliff Line area next to the Northern Wastewater Treatment Plant. CCU Chairman Joey Duena says this new plant will allow GPA to come into compliance with U.S. EPA regulations. Four slow-speed diesel units, number 3, 4, 8, and 9, are not in compliance with U.S. EPA regulations for emissions. Basically, GPA's generators are polluting the air, and they were supposed to be fixed by May of 2013. To address this, the CCU has decided to build three new power plants along the Harmon Cliff Line area next to the Northern Wastewater Treatment Plant. CCU Chairman Joy Duenas. We now can use the uh, treated wastewater and treat it a little bit more and use that wastewater, we can reuse the wastewater as the water needs for these plants. The wastewater will be used for cooling and generating steam in these plants. Right now we are using water down at Cabris and we're using potable water, drinking water, for the needs of those plants. If we build these new plants and put them up next to the northern wastewater treatment plant and reuse that water, then we don't have to use potable water. That's drinking water, which we can save for population growth, expansion. Duena says the generators they are looking at purchasing for the new plants are called combined cycle units, which Duena says are 25% more efficient than their most efficient unit at Cabras. 
These generators will be able to burn either low sulfur diesel or liquid natural gas. Duenas says to get their current generators compliant, it would cost $350 to $400 million, and it would be cheaper to purchase the three new combined cycle units. They could be as low as $250 million. They could be. We, we need, you know, this is where we bid and we see where the numbers are. Or as high as 350 or, or, or as high around 300. They're, oh. they're, they're saying it's around 300, but it could even be lower than that. Okay. These plans will now need to be approved by the Public Utilities Commission and then by the U.S. EPA. So your power bill may drop next month. Because of the worldwide decrease in fuel prices, the Guam Power Authority has requested another 10% reduction in the fuel recovery charge to the average ratepayer following the 10% cut two months ago. The Public Utilities Commission's legal counsel, Fred Harecki, says it might be even greater. He tells PNC that PUC's consultant suggested a 20% reduction, which amounts to about $50 off the average bill every month. Harecki says the commissioners will decide what LEAC factor to adopt for February 1st through July 31st at their meeting tonight. So when's the last time you sat down and read a good book? Well, come Monday, you'll be able to find classics from Jane Austen and Ernest Hemingway, as well as more modern tales, at the Hagania Library. The library's been closed since September when the 70-ton air conditioner unit used to cool the building broke down. New split air conditioners have been installed throughout the facility, allowing it to finally reopen on Monday. Another 70-ton unit will be ordered soon as well, but the library plans to keep the smaller units for backup so that they won't have to close next time the air conditioning breaks. Upon reopening, the Hagania Library will be open from 9 to 5.30 Monday through Thursday, noon to 4.30 on Friday, and from 8.30 to 4.30 on Saturdays. Speaking of broken air conditioners, like Watson's up next at sports, after this. I didn't, broken air, <laughs> I, I didn't know. get that. that. I don't know, I just needed, I needed something clever for Blake. You All always right. do. <laughs> Blake Watson, sports.